live from Augustana Lutheran Church in Portland, Oregon, under the leadership of Reverend W.J. Mark Knudsen, we are having church. Good morning. 
Augustana Lutheran Church in many places in the world today and to our wonderfully beautiful and eclectic human family we are all part of wherever you are. We are gathered today in Augustana Lutheran Church's sanctuary, a place of welcome and of home. Last week, we had 270 house churches meeting in the congregation. And today, thanks to a wonderful team, we are able to go live stream. To all of you out there, we miss you. We look forward to meeting you if we haven't already. But we know God is holding us in the palm of God's hand. We always say, welcome to understand. We're a thriving, multicultural, multinational, multi-generational congregation. Called by Christ to work with our sisters and brothers, Muslim and Jew, Hindu and Buddhist, Sikh, Native American spiritual leaders, other people of faith and people of just goodwill, to weave the beloved community, especially in this day for healing and for hope, to weave that community that affirms who every person is, made so wonderfully in the image of God, and to seek to renew the creation for generations yet to come. We are a sanctuary church. So the world is what the Creator intended it to be, sanctuary for every human being. Today, many of you are finding your homes or your apartments as your sanctuary, a place of safety, and you are serving our prayers. We think at the same time of those in shelters, refugees seeking homes, seeking a place for shelter. We think of the reservations in this nation, and of many native nations in this country, as well as the nations of the earth today. Together we know the Creator is making us one as we address this moment in time. The coronavirus, known as COVID-19, is something that has affected all of us. It has put fear in our hearts at the same time it has given people courage. And it's called us to see deeper relationships. And we've been given the gift of communications. So we know God is in everything. So God is in our virtual worship today as God surrounds the earth with God's Love. I want to thank our worship leaders. We have leaders from all four of our services today. A Deacon Sue Best from the 8.30 service and Ben Joy from 8.30. From the 11 o'clock service, Dr. Walter Krieger playing the organ and the piano. From the 4 p.m. Open Circle service, Andrea Robodeau, the leader of our Open Circle ministry. From the 6 o'clock service, um, Marilyn Keller member of the Jazz Hall of Fame and Oregon, and two who go to a number of services, three actually. Michelle Gray Fox is here today, Glenn Jacobs is taking care of the facility that he's here today, and Francisco Aguirre is doing our webcasting, and he's a member of our council, and also will be leading the lesson. And at the other end at our home, our congregational president, Anne Reyes Prezi, is taking care of the web page itself. So God has called us to this place. May we do so and say, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad in it. Please join as you are able. For those who did not get the hymns ahead of time, wherever you are in the world today, the hymns we will be using will be there as a poem in Gilead, led by Marilyn Keller and Dr. Krieger. Following that, Marilyn will be singing, This is My Song. And then the closing hymn will be Amazing Grace. And you can find those on the web if you don't have a hymnal at home. Please let us gather as we gather in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you.
continue with the words of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If we keep watch over our sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness. And so we confess. Gracious God. Have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you, knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O oh God. Give us a new heart to try our spirits, that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Let us say together the prayer of the day. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come Amen. among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring the light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your spirit. We live and reign with the Creator and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to send to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heavier with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel said, What the Lord commanded? Samuel said, What the Lord commanded, and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peacefully? And he said, Peacefully, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he said, Sanctify Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked at Eli and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of, of his stature, because I have projected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abedinab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Samah pass by. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Jesse said, Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, that he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for he, we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. And now he was ruddy, and he had beautiful eyes, and he was handsome. And the Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, and anointed him in the presence of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord became mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then sent out and went to Ramah. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Speak to God. The second reading comes from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 through 14. Francis was next. Once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. 
Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. El Señor es mi pastor. Nada me falta en verdes pastos me hace descansar. Cuanto tranquilas aguas me conduce, me infunde nuevas fuerzas, me guía por sendas de justicia por amor a su nombre. Aún así voy por valles tenebrosos. No temo peligro alguno porque tú estás a mi lado. Tu vara de pastor me reconforma, dispone ante mí un banquete en presencia de mis enemigos, ha ungido con perfume mi cabeza, has llenado mi copa, la restaré gozar, la bondad del amor me guiará todos los días de mi vida, y en la casa del Señor habitaré para siempre. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be want. He made me lay down in green pastures. He lit me beside quiet waters. He restored my soul. He guided me in path of righteousness. For his name's sake, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You rode in your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflow. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of God. La palabra de Dios. The Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 9, verses 1 to 43. As Jesus walked along, he saw a blind man, a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which meant means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes open? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind, 
blind man. What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he see now? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind. And they said to him, give glory to God. We know that the man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already and you will not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you always want to become his disciple? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. What you do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys him, his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sin, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see and those who do see may become blind. For some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sin. But, not, but now that you say we see, your sin remains. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. was chosen from the ELW and it is our anthem for this day and for these days of social distancing that we face. This is my song, oh God of all the nations. Uh, 
Just this past summer, we had great gatherings with musicians to raise money for those who are houseless. Maybe we will all wake up in this time to what it means to be alone and afraid, as our sisters and the brothers of the streets often are. How might we use the resources to renew our society? How many times have we gathered to lift up the immigrant, the refugee, and today we think of 68 million who have been struggling and who are very much at risk right now. How might this moment in time, as we consider what we're dealing with, our heart can connect with those who have been broken? To the children in the church today who cannot be here, you know we have children's time, and you know we often use the stained glass windows as storybooks, because you know as children you get your chapter book, and then you, well first you get your picture book, and then you get a chapter book, and next thing you know you're going on for your education. Today as I say these words, I look up to a stained glass window. One of our station, new stations was here last Sunday to an empty church, I said, how do you find peace in these moments? And I can look at that window of Jesus giving the sign of peace. And I reminded them of that day that first Easter, after all the world had fallen apart for those disciples, Jesus showed up and said, peace be with you. So my prayer today, three times he said, peace be with you. That in your home today, you will know that peace of God that passes all understanding. Take time each day in the chaos of not having the normal rhythm to find that place of peace, that place of centeredness. No matter what is going on in the world today, find that place of centeredness because that gives us the children know there's another stained glass window I've always loved, and that's in the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. This is a balcony as well, and it's a, it's a window that shows the first ever depiction of an African American Jesus in the South. It's a beautiful window after four little girls died in that sanctuary because of hate in the 60s. Children in other parts of the world from many backgrounds raised money to put that window there. And the window shows Jesus with a hand outstretched to pull people in, another hand out to hold back those things that would harm the children. So to the children today, remember that Jesus is there for you. Your parents, your grandparents, your aunts and uncles are there to help you grow through this and move through this, but know that God is very present. The children here also know that one of the favorite windows is the Good Shepherd window. Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. And the reason I love that window is because Jesus' coloring in that window changes all day long to every shade of the human race, saying, I am the good shepherd. I heard a little girl once said, she saw the window and she said, in her own way, rather than the Lord is my shepherd, in the way we might traditionally say it, she said, the Lord is my shepherd. What else could I want? Not the Lord is my shepherd. What else could I want? I think of that word of a child saying that in a way that reminds us that God is present today. God is in our midst. As we deal with the fear, as we deal with the unknowns, as we deal with what we are going into, and we know that God will guide us and lead us through it. We know there are statistics coming around the world we are praying for every country in the world because today in every language people are hearing in many places the same scripture readings you heard earlier of a blind man receiving his sight. Oh God, give us our sight in these times to see one another anew. You heard stories of, uh, of a, a king being found God looking at the inside of us and how God looks at the beauty of every human being. You, you heard the reading about being light. But in every church that uses the common lectionary around the globe today, in every single language on the face of this earth, we are hearing also the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Words that remind us that God is present. And so in this time in which we are living, I pray that as we reach out in ways that are not physical touch, but we reach out through communications, through prayer. I, I pray that God will use us in new ways, that we will deepen relationships, so when that hallelujah day comes, when we can gather together for worship, for powwows, for, for concerts, for being together, 
that we'll see each other in a new light. We pray with every fiber in our body that people in the world will be safe today and we will find that vaccine and that people will care for one another. We pray at the same time God will renew our spirits. The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. As the little girl said, the Lord is my shepherd, what else could I want? We know today as we gather in this house of prayer and you gather in your homes, that we will move through this. We know generations before us have moved through wars and depressions. Many of them are saying they've never seen anything like this. At the same time, we trust in a God who will lead us and guide us and give us all that we need for this journey. So our prayer today is that we will reach out to one another in ways that are new and profound. And we will see our oneness in our humanity, every person on the face of this earth created in the image of God. We pray that we will hear the Good Shepherd say to our healthcare workers, I am with you because we lift them up every day and for those who do essential services. We pray for those who work in the stores today, for those who are providing care for those who are sick, for those who are reaching out and housing those who are houseless. We pray for those who are sheltered at home today and we pray for the nations of the earth that we'll see that we are one in this day. The Good Shepherd reminds us, weep you may tarry for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. The Good Shepherd reminds us to keep doing what you're doing, to love kindness, to walk humbly with God while you're doing justice. The Good Shepherd reminds us that there was a Good Friday when everything seemed lost, yet Easter dawn came. And that peace of God that passes of all understanding, may it keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. May God bless you this day, each of you. And may we work for God's shalom, God's peace in our society and in our hearts as we work for a time of healing and hope. Let us pray. Please stand for the prayers. Gracious and loving God, you are our shepherd. What else could we want? We pray this day for the nations of the earth, that they will work closely together for healing and for hope in this time. We pray for the president of this country and the Congress as they come to a new day of collaboration prayerfully to do what is needed for those who are unemployed or those who are houseless or those who are imprisoned for those who are refugees and immigrants, those who are already struggling with this extra layer now added on to it. We pray for those who have lost their jobs this day, that we as a nation will make sure they have enough to live on and people can stay housed and fed. We pray for the healthcare workers and all those who are valiantly, literally going out and caring for others in their jobs. And we pray that you'll give us that resolve, that courage to live in this day amidst our doubts, amidst our wondering, amidst fears. Give us that faith, hope, and love that we knew your creation. For God, you are a God of power and life. And we know these dry bones can live. We know sight can be restored. And we know you guide us and lead us each and every day. Hear us now as we pray the prayers of Jesus Thomas. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we go this day to be safe and keep that good social distance, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Spirit. Amen. 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 Let us all join together wherever you are in the hymn Amazing Grace. You know those verses of Marilyn and Dr. Krieger will, Miss Marilyn Keller and Dr. Walter Krieger will lead us in this hymn.
the post flute on the organ. And know that every Sunday at 10 a.m., this service will be live streamed using uh, the gifts of various members of the church in small and safe numbers so we can provide worship. Spread the word. Let us use this time to grow in our, and deepen our faith. Let us hear the post flute. Thank you to all today who participated.